This video is sponsored by Surfshark. That is the VPN, the virtual private network that we use here. Uh, we use it to protect all of our online banking, our passwords, everything's more secure. Uh, you can change your locations that you are uh, using the internet from. So if you go to another country, you still wanna access your Netflix from your country where more videos and things are available, you can do that through there. Uh, it's just, it's a great VPN. They have a special going on right now until January 1st. You can get 84% off the regular price, which is an incredible deal. And on top of that, you also get four months for free uh, if you sign up for the service before uh, January 1st. So again, we love Surfshark. Uh, it's a great VPN, keeps you more secure. It, the virtual private network is awesome. And we've been using it now for about six months and absolutely love it. It's really easy to change your location in the Surfshark app. Uh, you just, you know, click the different place you want to go to and there's thousands of different locations that you can choose from. So you just press a little button and change where your uh, IP is coming from so it thinks you're in that country. It's really easy to do. So we have a 50 DN alternator on this bus engine and the other one had a regular old style generator. Um, so the voltage regulators are totally different. So right now we don't have this hooked up at all, um, but we got the voltage regulator that came from the other, uh, the donor bus. So we'll be able to mount this in here and we just gotta change a little bit of wiring around uh, and we should be able to have that hooked up in there and get that alternator charging the system. One step at a time and uh, a few things to change around. We should be able to have this in there and hooked up. It only has three wires that go to it. Um, there's a positive, a field and a negative, and that's it. Not too many tools required for the job today. Just got my little wire caddy there and a bunch of connectors, wire strippers, crimpers, and of course the power probe. Make sure we're hooking up everything the right way. That shows us that that's positive, 12.8 volts. Does that. This will just go to ground right now because it's not hooked to anything. Um, that's ground right there, that wire. And this one then here should go to the field on the alternator. That's it's labeled there. So these two wires both join in to that cable there. So they are numbered. I don't know if they're numbered at the other end. Of course they use... So the reverse solenoid on here wasn't working. We confirmed that it was getting power from up front. Uh, we could help it and then it would it would magnetically work if we helped it. So I'm just taking it apart and cleaning it. It's pretty nasty in there. Uh, the rubber boot obviously is missing on it. So we're just getting it polished up here a little bit, cleaned up and hopefully we'll be able to get it to work. Worst case scenario, I have another one over there. Uh, that we can swap off of that one, but we'll see if we can get this one working first. So it just doesn't have the, just give it a little tap there. It wants to move it. It's just not, not getting it done, so we're going to replace it. So I replaced it. And it doesn't work at all now. And if you push it in, let's see if I can do this while the phone is in my hand. Oh, no. Sorry. It won't even hold if I keep the power on it and pull it in. But it has good ground. So it's just nothing. Doesn't work. No bueno. Replace the plunger on this one from the the newer looking bad one to this one because it's in a little better shape. And maybe with the two parts together, I can get it to work. The new plunger didn't do anything, so I put the old one back. Go ahead and try it. It gets most of the way. Just give it a little help and it'll go and stay. Release. Try it. Release. Try it. Just not quite strong enough. Release. Hit it. Scan the line. 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 Scan the line
on. That's something that wasn't done last year. Had a lot of other people come in grabbing the corner, oh, so I yeah. recess his handle in here to, That's to help him get up. This on slides. I'm gonna make a door in front of that. Oh. Does that seat swivel too, or no? Yes. Yeah, uh, you gotta slide it all the way forward, and then it's almost enough room to get it to come around. But I think I'm gonna wind up taking the swivel off because nice. we never use it. Yeah. I was wanting to change mine to swivel, but yeah. maybe I never would use it. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you know, once you swivel it around, you're, you're pointing this way, you don't ever have that much company in here, really. Plus, you just rode in that damn seat all day. You want to get out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have to use them because... We, we you got enough people, yeah. yeah. We've got almost every spot just, taken Just out. a couple of us. Yeah. Yeah, we put the cabinets. We made these, my youngest boy, three, 3D printed those out. Oh, yeah. I like. I love how he lined the cabinets with the drawings from the books. Yeah, that's cool. Misty put those in. I put a skim coat of bond over that and painted it with some enamel just to make it look a little shiny. Gotcha. We cut a table in half and put it here. The store stuff on. Recovered all of our chairs. Yeah, it's an old 35 gauge aluminum. We spray foam and then wrap it all in, in aluminum. Hold all these rivets by hand. Yeah. Had a couple of guys yeah. say, why don't you use a 3M tape? You can just tape it on there. You know, in 47, they wouldn't have had tape. That would have been a rip. Yeah. It makes it look more authentic, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't detract from anything. I like it. on our, our walls, too. These are one by one aluminum. Frames in here. And we filled that full of one inch styrofoam. And yeah, I like the skins off That's cool. <laughs> Other than that, it's just... That's where we put our mini split. When I put it on swing, it swings down and blows right on you. I like that it blows forward, but... may have to change that design a little bit, or at least take it off the swing at night. Well, it's... I mean, especially if you keep this front door closed, I mean, yeah, it's going to run yeah. very little back here. Yeah. You probably yeah. could just get a couple of good batteries and not have to run your generator at night. As probably little could. as it would run. Or you could make the batteries like Juan did on his. Yeah, that'd be nice. That's a nice, nice setup. I watched that video, but I don't know. <laughs> You're an electrician. Know. I know, but <laughs> I just don't have the patience for yeah. it. That's my problem. Oh, right? He's got patience, that's yeah, for sure. I saw in that video, he just took it all apart, checked yeah. all the fittings, all the connections. <laughs> Yeah, it's very possible, but I just I made that seat surround around mine because that never looked finished. You yeah, know? no, so even for, yeah. Down, just put it in there. Cool. I had it up a little higher, but I, I kept cutting it down until it looked about right. I need to add my defrost heat back in because mine, somebody cut all that out on mine. That's nice. That register blows out at you. It keeps you a little, little warm anyway. Not, not much when it was zero, much, right? No, <laughs> the heat that whole housing was cold. <laughs> I'm really surprised they didn't. Well, did they? I guess they. Do they have a duct? That yeah, comes it, yeah, a duct that comes out. Yeah, of that and goes up, up on the top. Up on the top. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, I can't believe they didn't have something on the front windshield. Yeah, those those will oh, blow down. Yeah. Gotcha. And then those swings. Gary's going to do a cold start here for us this morning. It was, we got on like 30, some 32 last night, 34. Yeah. And it's about, it's, it's in the 40s right now, probably.
I just got to get a couple self tappers to put in here. Uh, only one bolt would fit. The second bolt hole doesn't line up right. It's like half a hole off, of course. Um, so we're going to get that mounted on there permanently. This one here only weighs like one pound. Um, the one that came off probably weighs about 30 pounds. <laughs> big, big difference in weight, that's for sure. And size, that thing's, you know, five times bigger. Just want to make sure that I have voltage up there. And this should work. Okay, we got everything here hooked up, except I did not hook the, once I put the terminal lug on there, I don't have that hooked up to the alternator. First thing we're going to do is try and find out if it is negative or positive ground. Um, we do not know that. In 1960, a version of the 4104 had the 50DN instead of a generator, and that particular one was positive ground, not negative ground like we have today. GM didn't change that until 1961. A uh, couple things, this bus was hooked up uh, negative ground, the batteries when I got it. Does that mean that the last person actually put the batteries in correctly? No, I don't know that for sure. Um, they could have just hooked the batteries up backwards. Most uh, most systems on this bus will operate either way. Um, the voltage regulator that came with the old engine actually says positive on it and then field in the middle and then ground on the bottom. If that voltage regulator was made for a negative ground vehicle, it would have not, or for a positive ground vehicle, it would say negative and then ground, not positive and ground. So uh, that leads me to think that it is probably, at some point the alternator was changed, uh, and that's not the original alternator that was with it, so they put a modern negative ground alternator on it. So I talked to the guy at U, uh, that rebuilds the 50DNs for Luke at US Coach, um, and he said the 50DN, he said really the way that he tests it is he just takes the main battery terminal cable to it, and he touches it to the to the positive post, and if nothing happens, then it's negative ground. If you touch it to it, to the positive terminal there, and it's like the 4th of July, well, then it's positive ground. So we'll see what happens here when we touch this to the power, put my glasses on, and we don't want to see any sparks. No sparks. That's a good sign. I just had to disconnect the batteries um, and then I pulled this cable. This cable is warm. I don't know what's going on. Um, I have Jeff here from Gino's Garage. Uh, he's staying here on the property. I'm gonna have him run down and see if he can uh, help me troubleshoot what's going on, but that cable should have not got warm. This ground wire feels a little bit warm too. Um, but I think if that was like a direct short with the alternator, then it would have like melted some terminals here or something. And I mean, nothing is so hot where you can't hold it. So it just this, this feels warm. Very weird. Okay. Well, we hit a stopping point for today. Um, I'm going to wait till tomorrow and, uh, call back the alternator guy and see if he's got any clue on why that might be or I'm afraid to hook it up and run it uh, I don't know if it'll do anything different when it's running if that's a problem uh, I'm not the alternator expert uh, so I'll call and talk to him again uh, it's been a holiday weekend here Christmas and everything so we're gonna stop there uh, on that for today and then uh, not a good electrical day for me I mean I fought fought that stupid reverse solenoid which still isn't working a hundred percent i'm hoping if i charge the batteries back up a little bit more with a little higher voltage to it maybe that'll make it suck it in a little bit more um we'll see so not a whole lot with that and fought that for geez probably an hour and a half and then uh the alternator i'm just afraid to start it uh I, that cable should not be warm so i gotta figure out what's going on uh this will be nothing Getting ready to pull out this morning. Start it back here so I can see where you got the keys.
actually now I got the official notification from the KHOA to get this crap out of here. I've <laughs> left in the muffler of bows that he's given to Lance sitting out here for like two months now. <laughs> 